Okay, so uh, hi everyone. I think that uh, we'll wait around two minutes, I guess, and, uh, and then start. <clears throat> Um, I think that some people people are still joining, so we'll wait just a bit more. Okay, I think that uh, we could start. So, um, hi, uh, I'm Andre. I'm um, uh, I'm uh, I'm a machine learning researcher at B Defenders uh, Theoretical Re Research Lab, um, and I'm going to present to you today date detecting anomalies in text via self supervision of transformers. Uh, this work was done um, with Florin Brad and Elena Borciano. Uh, my colleagues from uh, from Beat Defender and uh, Elena is also with the uh, Simon Stoilov um, uh, Math Institute. Okay. Um, so first of all, uh, as I said, I'm part of the theoretical research lab. So uh, you can um, see the stuff that we do at this uh, this GitHub link, uh, btml.github.io. Uh, this paper that I'm going to present was accepted to uh, NACL 2021. Uh, you can find the link to it uh, on this slide and also uh, a summarized version in the form of a poster uh, at the bit.ly link. Okay. Uh, this meeting will be recorded. If you have any questions, uh, please type it in the chat, or uh, uh, you can unmute your mic and uh, and just ask me anything uh, while I'm presenting. Uh, I'm first going to present to you uh, the problem of anomaly detection, then we're, I'm going to speak a bit about self-supervised learning, and finally I'm going to present to you a date and the, and the conclusions. Okay. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, what's an anomaly? So if we look at this picture, we can see that uh, there's some interesting data pattern in the middle, but also some points that seem to not belong uh, to that pattern. Well, basically, an outlier or, or uh, an anomaly is an observation which deviates from the way that we expect the data to look like. So in this case, the red dots would be anomalies uh, in the context of the blue dots data set. Um, uh, in computer vision, for example, uh, an alpaca would be an anomaly in a data set full of human faces. Uh, but it could be more subtle, like uh, in the second case with an angry Shiba Inu in a data set full of, uh, full of happy Shiba Inus. Um, <clears throat> in natural language processing, we would want to be able to detect anomalies uh, such that we could um, uh, augment uh, phishing or spam detection systems and, uh, and stuff like this. But also, maybe we would want to be able to, uh, to detect fake text. So uh, in this example, I've, uh, I've used the model called GPT-3, uh, which is pretty popular in the, uh, uh, in the last years. 
uh, and I prompted it with uh, with the text in uh, in Teal, and I said to it that I'm Andrei Manolaki, and I'm going to present uh, this work on anomaly detection using transformers at the Defenders Microconference. And uh, the cool uh, the cool stuff here is that uh, it uh, was able to localize the uh, headquarters in Bucharest. And uh, also, there's some ad campaign that uh, that we did some time ago uh, with superheroes, so it knows something about this, right? So you can see how this text uh, can be hard to to distinguish. I mean, it's hard even for a human to be able to tell that uh, the text in red is generated. So we would maybe want to train some models that are able to recognize stuff like this. <coughs> okay. Uh, Uh, to in the case of supervised learning, uh, basically we have uh, data which is annotated. So if I if I have a picture of a cat, I know that there's a cat in that picture, and I want uh, my model to be able to detect cat, cats in other pictures. Uh, okay, in unsupervised learning, I basically know that I have a picture, and that's it. Uh, I want to find some interesting data pattern in it. <laughs> and self-supervised learning is basically a form of unsupervised learning where some parts of the data can provide the supervision. So uh, this is usually done by uh, eliminating or corrupting some parts of the data <clears throat> and let the model predict them and we're filling the gaps. So basically we can do stuff like predicting the past uh, from the future or the future from the past. <clears throat> but also occlude any part of the data and, uh, and predict the, the occluded data. Okay, uh, in, in computer vision, we have uh, these examples. So in the left side, we have image colorization. So basically, uh, we eliminate some information from, uh, from our image. <clears throat> in this case, uh, it's the color channels that are eliminated, and we want to reconstruct the uh, the initial uh, the initial color. And in the second example, uh, uh, there's uh, image in painting, so uh, we would want to <clears throat> be able to reconstruct the whole face given uh, given parts of the of the face. And you can see why um, models trained in the, with these techniques need to know something about the world, need to know something about the context. So <clears throat> in the case of image and painting, uh, our model should be able to reconstruct the face with the texture of, uh, of a human face. The model needs to know that uh, a human face contained, uh, contains a nose or a mouth or, uh, or stuff like this. And there's, uh, there's two things. So it should no stuff about the low level details so uh, as i said the textures but uh, it should be able to uh, have some knowledge about the context the the high level details of the human face uh, you can see for example that it was able to reconstruct a smile based on the the parts of the face that uh, are visible <clears throat> okay in natural language processing we have stuff like uh, language models, which are uh, very popular. So this is an example of a pretext task, uh, self-supervised pretext task in uh, NLP. <clears throat> so in the first example, we just want to predict the next token. So uh, if we have the text, they were ready to go. We would want to get a word distribution uh, of viable next tokens. So in this case, the model should be able to complete the text with the word depart, with the token depart. And it, it should also know that cherry would be uh, a bad pick for, uh, for the next word. <clears throat> the second example would be next sentence prediction. So given some context, uh, in this case, uh, it's, the, it's the phrase, they were ready to eat. It should be able to tell that uh, if the next, um, next sentence <clears throat> is is correct basically so uh, it should tell us that the food was tasty would be a good continuation of the first sentence and that tensions in the parliament uh, is not uh, other tasks include the uh, mask language modeling so if uh, if i have the text they were ready to go and i mask ready and go 
I'd want my model to to be able to basically fill in the gaps and uh, and generate something like prepared and depart for the third and fifth words. <clears throat> and another task would be um, the replace token detection task. So uh, I basically mask parts of the input and I want to predict if um, the token is original or it was replaced with something else. So in this case, I have they were ready to go and I replace ready with cookie. And I want my model to be able to tell that uh, they were to depart our original and uh, cookie is not based on the context, basically. So you can see that um, even um, even in NLP, our models should be able to tell something about the structure of the of the phrase <clears throat> and about the context. Uh, it should also uh, uh, have some semantic idea about uh, what uh, what's typed, basically. Okay. <clears throat> A class of popular models uh, in both computer vision and natural language processing uh for doing self-supervision would be the transformer so this is a model that um uh, that was developed some time in 2017 <clears throat> and <clears throat> it's become very popular uh recently in both nlp and uh, and more recently in computer vision uh what people are, are doing is basically um they get huge amounts of data and they uh they pre-train these transformers as uh, language models or uh, with some self-supervised task and they're basically just using them uh, on other downstream tasks by uh, by by fine tuning okay and uh, it has some key advantages so uh, transformers are uh, more efficient that uh, than rnns or cnns and this is basically enabling us to build some really large models uh, and also they are they're ideal for uh, self-supervised tasks so as i said uh, you basically want to learn something about the world by training the network in a in a self-supervised manner and fine-tune it uh, in uh, for example a domain in which you don't have a lot of data <coughs> okay uh, we, we basically make the implicit assumption that by uh, uh, doing the self-supervised pre-training we we learn something meaningful about uh, about the world okay uh finally uh there's here's date basically so the main idea is uh, that we should learn how a normal text looks like in a non-supervised or semi-supervised fashion by carefully designing a self-supervised task for transformers and uh, we basically do that using two components well, we have a generator which is sampling some tokens from a word distribution and is corrupting our input and also a discriminator which should solve two tasks so <clears throat> first we have the replaced token detector uh, which uh, is the task that i uh, described earlier it needs to uh, detect which token is corrupt and which one is original and we have the replaced mask detector uh, which detects which masking pattern was applied over the initial input text so uh, during training uh, we basically do this so we sample a mask from a collection of k pre-generated masks then we apply the masking pattern to the original input and we corrupt the mask tokens uh, then we guess which tokens were replaced which masking pattern was applied and we optimize the network based on three and four so basically uh, in this example from uh, from the left if we have the text they were ready to go we pick the first mask we apply the mask uh, the binary mask on ready and go so uh, these tokens are uh, are unknown uh, right now <clears throat> then we use a generator which could be uh, uh, something like a language model or just a distribution over the over the vocabulary and uh, we corrupt our input so uh from they were ready to go we get something like they were prepared to depart now <clears throat> we get the global representation of the phrase using the the cls token and uh, we we basically need to predict that the first mask was applied and also for every token we uh, guess if it was replaced or not so in this in this example we should guess that prepared and depart were replaced uh during inference 
we discard the generator and we're feeding the uncorrupted sequence directly into the discriminator. Uh, then for every token, we look at some score called the PL score, the pseudo labeled score. And this is basically the probability that uh, a token is not corrupted. Then we average uh, this probability over the entire sequence and we basically get an anomaly score by doing that. Uh, formally, the thing that we optimize uh, during training is the following loss. So uh, it's basically the cross entropy loss uh, on the sequence level for the entire masking patterns and uh, also a binary classification head uh, for, uh, for every token to tell, if, uh, to tell us if it's replaced or not. Okay, and our main assumption when doing anomaly detection in this way is that uh, if our model is seeing um, an anomaly, an outlier, it should uh, tell us that there is a bigger probability that every token is corrupted. So even if we don't corrupt anything, it should it should tell us that um, that there's something fishy going on, basically. <clears throat> so this uh, this lead, this uh, leads to a lower PL score for outliers and a higher PL score for inliers. Okay, so in the experimental setup, in the semi-supervised uh, experimental setup, we um, use two data sets. We use 20 news groups and AG news. And we're, we're basically training our network on, uh, on clean samples. So we get a, a split uh, from the data set, we train on it, and then uh, every other uh, split is considered as being an anomaly. <clears throat> and these are the first uh, qualitative results on AG news and 20 news groups, uh, news groups. And this is the uh, anomaly detection performance uh, measured in the area under the Richiever operating curve. Okay, uh, this is an ablation study. So uh, basically what we did um, was that uh, <clears throat> we uh, used some, some other anomaly score. Uh, we tried to use uh, a language model as our generator. Uh, we varied the loss function. Well, we changed the masking patterns and uh, the masking percentage. Uh, and our best configuration was uh, by using the PL score, as described earlier. Um, we use a random generator, so we just have a uniform distribution over the vocabulary. Uh, we use the RTD plus RMD loss, uh, 50 masks. So the number of masks is pretty fine. We, we just generate before training uh, number of 50 masks. And 50 percent, um, um, and we mask ba basically 50 percent of the text uh, during training. <clears throat> uh, this is quite strange. Uh, I mean, it, it's not really strange, but it's atypical because um, language models are uh, usually trained with 15% uh, um, mask tokens, uh, but we found out that 50% uh, works best. Okay, um, this are the anomaly score at the beginning of training versus at the end of training. So we have two splits right here. We have uh, articles about sports, and the article is about the world, uh, general news articles. And you can see that um, if at the beginning we have uh, basically two Gaussians um, for these scores for both uh, inlars and outliers, which are overlapping, uh, at the end we could find a threshold such that uh, we should be able to discriminate with, between inlars and outliers. <clears throat> Uh, and also, we uh, we tried our model in the unsupervised scenario, so we wanted to see if it fails um, when the data is contaminated with outliers. And actually, we find out we found out that even at ten percent contamination, we get better results than the competition at uh, at zero percent. So uh, the competition is basically uh, are basically two classical uh, models. So we have the one class SVM and the isolation forest. And also uh, CVDD, which is a method from uh, 2019, I think, uh, and uh, we get better results than, uh, than both. Okay, um, these are more interesting. So those are some qualitative results. Uh, the first two <clears throat> are basically in the scenario where we train on sports data and science data and test on general news articles about the world. Uh, and you can see that uh, in the first case, 
our model thinks that uh, words such as democrat or politically or motivated uh, seem strange in the context of sport so we don't usually um, uh, have stuff about uh, i don't know uh, uh, po political data when uh, when reading sports articles in the second case uh, our model thinks that words like panama or flooding are strange <clears throat> and in the last case uh, our model is basically correctly um, telling us that a business article uh, looks like a business article even if some words uh, like motorola or equipment seem strange but you can see that uh, overall uh, it looks a lot better than um, than the first two examples Okay, um, this made us curious, and we wanted to find out if date is able to detect something else than uh, than just topic anomalies. Because uh, it's kind of easy to tell if something is different than something else uh, just by uh, studying uh, its content. So if I um, uh, if I read the articles about sports, I'm gonna know that it's because that it's about sports because uh, it contains stuff like uh, i don't know players football and and so and so on uh, so uh, we we wanted to know if date can discriminate between uh, based on features other than the team of the text and, and it seems like it it's able to actually do this so um, here we we're training some models on the pan data set it's an uh, author detection data set <clears throat> with different uh, articles with a different number of articles for uh, training and validation. And you can see that uh, data is able to uh, correctly identify 100% uh, of the time uh, some of the users when trained on uh, 25 of their writings. Uh, but also it has good results at uh, basically one shot uh, scenario where uh, it sees just one, news one article uh, written by, uh, by an author. So for user six, uh, we have a 95.4 AU uh, rock score, for example. Uh, okay, this is um, this is another um, qualitative result on um, on this data set. Uh, right here, user nine is correctly identified as user nine. Uh, you, we can see that uh, some words are identified as being strange. So in this case, <clears throat> there are a lot of stop words. And this is quite uh, quite interesting because stop words are usually used to um, uh, to profile uh, writers by hand. Uh, but in in the next example, uh, we can see that it's able to also find more interesting things like the use of punctuation. So uh, this sur surprised me because I wasn't expected uh, expecting it to work like this but uh, but uh, but it does in fact in fact work so it sees stuff like um, uh, suspend the suspension points for uh, question marks uh, as being strange in that context okay uh, so basically we would want to further develop dates uh, by doing more experiments on author profiling uh, we would want to test on different type types of anomalies so um, we know that we can do style we can detect style the stylistic changes uh, we can detect thematic changes and we would want to be able to uh, see if uh, we can detect anything else uh, we would also want to see if uh, data could be used to monitor uh, system logs for network traffic. Uh, and we would want to investigate um, uh, and integrate uh, variants of data on other uh, systems that do fake news detection, phishing, or spam detection. And the conclusions is, are that uh, self-supervised learning is a very powerful way of uh, learning representation with uh, neural networks, in this case with transformers, uh, that transformers trained via self-supervision uh, do very good when uh, at anomaly detection. Uh, data is also pretty good when the data set is contaminated with outliers. Uh, and also, uh, it's very interesting for me to see that the model is able to detect both thematic differences and stylistic changes. So uh, this is a pretty cool direction in, in which we can we could further investigate. 
Uh, okay, so this work was done by myself, by uh, by Florin Brad and Elena Borciano. Uh, you can contact us anytime at Amanolake Fubrad Borciano at bdefender.com. Uh, and also uh, check out our website uh, where you you could see more projects. Uh, okay, so uh, thanks. And if you have any questions, please uh, uh, please go ahead. Uh, can I guess that you heard me <laughs> all this time, right? Because uh, I can hear uh, I can hear nothing. Um, can someone? Yes, yes, you you are. Yes, yes, you are. Please. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, can you explain a bit more uh, how uh, did we choose the, the training splits and uh, on what did, uh, we trained on and what, on what we tested on? Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, we have these, uh, these data sets with uh, news articles and the setup is the following. So we, uh, 20 news groups, for example, has articles about computing, recreation, science, uh, miscellaneous, politics and religion. Uh, we pick one class, uh, we get the official training set for, uh, for that class, we train our model on, uh, on computing, for example, and then uh, we consider that the testing, um, that the testing uh, split for computing is our, 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 our inliers, basically, and all of the, all of the other uh, classes are the outliers. Uh, so in the semi-supervised scenario, we're basically just training on clean data and testing on the official testing split. Uh, but in the unsupervised scenario, we'll, uh, we'll con contaminate uh, our class with some outliers. Uh, so some data from the other, uh, the other classes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, basically, our networks, uh, our network will see um, uh, will see outliers during training in uh, in the unsupervised scenario. Okay, uh, Andre, you have a question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between a normal BERT uh, and the masking you have done? Uh, okay, so um, I'll try to remember, but I think that uh, one minute. Okay, so uh, first of all, Barrett is generating uh, masks on the fly. So uh, you, you will have a collection of basically infinite uh, masks that you can use. I, I mean, they're not infinite, but you get my point. Uh, we, we're first of all, pre-generating some, uh, some collection of masks. And also in BERT, you have um, just 15% uh, masked, uh, masked tokens. Uh, we pick 50, so uh, it's a lot more. Um, uh, and yeah, that's basically about it. But uh, with the mention that we don't do um, masked language modeling, uh, so we're not predicting uh, which token is masked. So we're not getting a probability distribution over the uh, vocabulary for a position. We just want to know if uh, that token is original or was replaced with something else. And that's something something else can come from, uh, from any kind of distribution. So you could have something as trivial as the, the uniform distribution over the entire vocabulary. So you flip a coin and you pick a word. Um, as I said, we tried to use both uh, uh, random generators or dumb generators and, uh, and the mask language modeling, uh, BERT actually, uh, and we found out that uh, it's worse for anomalies, uh, at least on these data sets, so uh, yeah. Um, 
Uh, we were kind of in inspired from Electra. So uh, the name date is actually detecting anomalies in text using Electra. So this uh, generator discriminates your idea comes from a paper called Electra by uh, Clark and others in 2020, I think. And they, they are actually using a, a masked language model for, uh, for their generator. Uh, which is about a fourth of the size of the discriminator, but uh, we found out that uh, it works better like this in, in anomalies. And they are also masking the tokens uh, like in BERT, so like, like in BERT. Uh, so they're generating masks on the fly. We don't do that. Did, did you try to use, instead of a mask token, some random word, some, I don't know, yeah, so basically this is what we actually do. So uh, the masking part is kind of uh, our, our, an artificial con construct. Um, um, but this is basically what we do. We just replace some, uh, some tokens in a predetermined uh, position. Uh, the mask picking and uh, the mask the mask we use is random, so we have pre-generated masks, but uh, but when we pick a mask, we do it by uh, by randomly picking one. Uh, so yeah, I think that uh, the uh, the the answer to the question is that yeah, we we're basically doing just that. We're replacing words with random words. Uh, okay, uh, Mihai uh, asked uh, uh, if we have a, a model for each class of topics, and uh, yes, we can explain. Yeah, yeah, the answer is yes. So basically, you you can think of it as a uh, one class classifier. <coughs> so you have uh, one model per class. Yeah, you uh, want to learn how the texts in one class uh, look like. So uh, for AG News, for example, we would have four models. Thanks. And it's one versus the other. So uh, in the testing, uh, in the testing scenario, you get you basically get uh, texts from science, sports, and world if you train on business. <clears throat> and you should uh, you should be able to tell that science, sports, and world uh, are outliers in the context of business. Uh, how large are these data sets? Uh, they're quite small, actually. Um, I think I have a yeah. So uh, twenty news groups contains uh, five hundred to. Uh, I don't know, do me of training training samples. And AG News is a bit bigger uh, with uh, 30K examples. <clears throat> and they're quite short, so uh, these articles are not that big. Uh, a bigger data set would be PAN, uh, so the author profiling data set. But uh, we've tested just on a subset of it. Uh, so this is not a global performance. We just wanted to see if it's able to uh, to find some interesting patterns and in, in authorship ver verification problem. Do you think this is suited also for for some non um, uh, language uh, related tasks? I don't know something like uh, anomaly de anomaly detection in some other areas like. Me. Uh, yeah, as long as it's sequen sequential data, I think that it could work. So um, I think that an approach like this could work on uh, system logs, for example. Uh, and I also think that you could train uh, some kind of visual transformer to do anomaly detection in vision in, uh, in, this, uh, in this manner, but uh, I haven't tried it. <laughs> so, uh, but, but, but I think that you can do it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mihai has another question related to the uh, pre-training of our model. Uh, uh, it, uh, he asked if uh, 
did you do some transfer learning prior uh, to training on these data sets? And no, so uh, we transfer no knowledge. Uh, we explicitly didn't want to do this because it, it could bring um, knowledge from other domains and uh, make our model biased to uh, say that something is not an anomaly when it in fact is. Uh, the only knowledge that we get from the exterior uh, is the fact that we use the bird tokenizer, but uh, there are no weights in the tokenizer. So <clears throat> it's basically just the way that the text is represented. You could uh, you you could try to make your own tokenizer, I guess, if you have a large corpora of text. But for these two data sets, uh, we didn't want to make our tokenizer because uh, it, it could uh, it could make a lot of words be unknown, so uh, we wanted something something bigger. But otherwise, we do absolutely no pre-training. Uh, this is trained from scratch. Thank you. So uh, related to the last question, we didn't uh, use it on an image or on a video, but in theory we can, and maybe we we would at some point. Yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, there are some self-supervised techniques in, uh, in computer vision, but uh, to detect anomalies, uh, I mean. Uh, but as far as I'm aware, I don't think that anyone did anomaly detection in computer vision with transformers, but I could be wrong. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not quite sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, about last year, uh, uh, people started doing uh, the visual transformer craze and stuff. So I don't think that anyone has done it until now. Uh, there are some convolutional neural networks that, uh, that detect anomalies via self-supervision instead. And yeah, in theory, it should work on, uh, on computer vision too. So, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, Andre, what you mean? Thank you for uh, the presentation. Okay, thank you for being here. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, again, you could uh, contact us, uh, send me an email somewhere on Twitter or stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to stop the share and the recording. Uh, thanks again for joining and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.